Our second speaker is Professor Ralph Fenderlands from our Department of Marketing, and he's going to talk about seeding strategies in online social networks. So Ralph, your turn. Uh, thanks, Kailun, and thanks everyone for uh, joining in uh, during this uh, day, especially with the nice weather. So I'm going to talk about uh, seeding strategies uh, to get attention in online social networks. So many companies, uh, already for many, many years, of course, they try, they try to use social networks and social connections to uh, spread uh, messages or to promote their products. To give uh, some examples, I think the most, probably the most famous one is uh, Dove. Uh, they have organized or they basically upload many videos and many campaign websites where they have some interesting video that is shared by many people. So for instance, uh, this Rebeauty campaign uh, of uh, a video is watched over 68 million uh, times on YouTube. I think uh, the last version of this video they uploaded uh, recently during the pandemic where uh, girls were uh, mostly, mostly focused on uh, girls making uh, selfies uh, and changing their completely their uh, own looks. And of course they try to uh, promote uh, their products, but also their uh, brand image using these kind of campaigns. Another example, and that is this one is not online, is the, uh, or it's partly online, but mostly uh, offline, is the AI's Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, maybe you have participated yourself in this. Uh, this campaign was in 2014 to raise awareness for ALS and also to uh, collect uh, donations. And people had to uh, put an ice bucket over their head make a video and share it to uh, their friends to encourage also participating in this uh, challenge. Uh, several of my students at that time participated in this ice bucket challenge and they also challenged me. Uh, I also participated. Um, according to uh, some reports, over 70 million uh, people participated. Also partly driven by the fact that some very famous celebrities such as Cristiano Ronaldo uh, participated. And maybe more importantly, they collected over 150 million uh, US dollars on uh, donations to, uh, through this uh, challenge. A very recent one, maybe not so many people involved, but still uh, quite significant, is the Zoom virtual background competition, right? So I think uh, this lecture is also through Zoom, Zoom and so many interactions through Zoom. So Zoom tried to promote themselves, but also uh, encourage people to play with different features. And in this virtual background competition, people were encouraged to make pictures uh, of themselves with their virtual background. Um, and the ones basically every month, I think uh, the three most interesting ones, according to Zoom, they won a prize. Uh, over 15,000 people uh, submitted a picture with, uh, with themselves in the Zoom background. And uh, this not only increased participation, but it also uh, basically raises awareness of using the virtual background. Of course, we are now all familiar with it, but at the start of this campaign, uh, when uh, the pandemic just started and people started using Zoom, uh, this was not so uh, uh, known, this feature. So this is, uh, these are all kind of examples where companies and uh, organizations use social media or social networks or connections between individuals to spread information. So there was a lot of research on this topic uh, in marketing, and I've done also quite a lot of research on, uh, on this myself. And an important question is, how can we reach as many people as possible in a social network? Okay, And there are, of course, many questions that you can answer. For instance, how do you design the campaign? Or how do you incentivize people? And what I'm uh, mostly looking at is what kind of individuals in a social network uh, are more influential? So if these people start sharing their information, um, you will reach a lot of other people. Okay, so that's the question that I'm interested in. And uh, this is uh, basically seeding. So targeting specifically specific individuals in a social network is called seeding. And of course, many companies, uh, they, they hire celebrities or they are uh, hire influential people in the social network and they pay them some money to share uh, a video or to share a product. So what motivated this research? So the motivation of this research is basically uh, we know from other researchers that targeting or seeding is a very important or critical success factor in a uh, viral marketing campaign. 
or in a campaign that uses a social network to spread messages or information. So network position, for instance, how many friends you have is an important predictor, how many people in the end will uh, watch your video or uh, engage with your content. So obviously, if you have many friends, then you might assume that uh, you reach many people. But the, uh, my question is, are there other factors that play a role other than the number of friends you have? For instance, what position do you have in your network? How many, uh, what is the connectedness of your friends, for instance? Uh, and that is part of this research. So the managerial objective is, what is the optimal seeding strategy? Imagine that you uh, want to target 10 people in a social network, which 10 people should you choose? And with optimal, uh, I'm interested in the reach of the campaign. So how many people in the end are engaging with this campaign or by, for instance, watching a video or making some donations? And to answer or to solve this research problem, of course, uh, you can come up with many research questions. I try to answer in this research two questions. The first one is, how does information spread on social networks? And the second question is, which network positions are most influential? Okay, so what uh, locations in the social network uh, are most uh, basically most important if you want to share information? So to make this a little bit more uh, concrete, I have a small question for you. So this is a social network. So it's a very simple one, of course. And imagine that you could target four people, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so these are four different people. And from those four, you can only choose one. And my question is, which of those four is most likely uh, obtaining the highest reach? So which one would be strategically the best one to target? So notice that all of them have the same number of friends. So person A has two friends, A1 and A2, and maybe some other friends, but these are the same as uh, person B. Then person B has also two friends, B1 and B2. Uh, person C has two friends, C1 and C2. And person D also has two friends, D1 and D2. Obviously, if you look, for, look further into the network, the friends of A, they have more friends than the friends of B, for instance. Okay, so this might be, uh, when you make your decision, an important um, thing that you can look into. So who would you target? Person A, B, C, or D. So I have uh, designed this a short poll. So my question is very simple. It's a multiple choice question. If you were in charge of this uh, of a marketing campaign and you could choose uh, only one person out of those four, who would you choose? Person A, B, C, or D. So I'm going to launch the poll now. Hopefully you see the results now. So as you can see from uh, your choices, 88% thinks that person A should be targeted and about 10% for the, or about, it's a little bit strange, 88% and then 10%, 10%, 7%. I'm not sure uh, how this is calculated. Uh, anyways, uh, it doesn't add up to 100%. But the majority uh, chooses person A and some of you think about B, C or D. So obviously if you think person A is the most, uh, is the best one to target, I think it makes a lot of sense and probably previous literature would recommend the same thing. Why do you want to target person A? Well, person A has two friends, but those friends have many friends, right? So if you think about targeting that person, person A can reach many, many uh, people in the network. Whereas if you focus on person B, person B has also two friends, but those two friends have only one friend, so they are not able to reach many people once they start sharing the information, okay? So let's uh, uh, dive a little bit deeper into this question and what's, uh, let's look what the literature would suggest. And as I said, the literature may, mostly would suggest person A. So who will obtain the highest reach in the social network? Well, if you look at uh, social influence, there are basically two factors that play an important role. The first one is basically network centrality of seeds, or in other words, how many friends do you have and how many friends do your friends have? Okay, so that's the first factor. So how many people can you reach very quickly? Obviously, if you look 
uh, into uh, networks, and that is also what uh, many uh, previous researchers would suggest, is that if you have many friends, you will obtain a higher reach. Um, and if you look into friends of friends, actually, uh, there is some mixed results. So some uh, people would say that is actually very effective, but including of my own research as a PhD student in the past, uh, Chen, as you can see in the last one, we find some mixed evidence. It's not so clear what uh, if you have if your friends have many friends, what will happen? Okay, but if you just focus on centrality, how connected you are, then you would think person A is the most effective. But there is also another important factor if you think about sharing information and reaching lots of lots of people is that if you share a message to your friends, it's also important that your friends pay attention. Okay, so that your friends are actually interacting with them. Although there is not so much research on this, there is some evidence that suggests that people with few connections, they are actually more likely to respond. Okay, so that will be su suggesting that person B might be more attractive because person B has not so many friends. And you could maybe think that this person has not so many friends, this person might more pay attention to these messages and therefore maybe engage more. Okay. So in this research, what we want to do is we want to look at both sources and find out what is the relative strength. So could, is it is A optimal or B optimal, or is it something in between? It could maybe be C or D. And some of you also uh, answered C of D or, uh, or D. So it depends a little bit on the strength of these two forces. So how did we test that? So we tested this uh, during the Super Bowl. And during the Super Bowl, as you know, there are many, many uh, advertising, many ad, uh, ads uh, on TV, and also many people start sharing these ads online. And some of these campaigns, they actually see uh, these uh, campaigns in social networks. And what we can see, observe is then, this person is going to share it. And then we also observe in an online social networks whether their friends are going to share it. Okay. So on average, these 33 campaigns had uh, about 110 seats. So that means one in the 10 people targeted and they started sharing uh, the message. And on average, each campaign was reached in the social network by close to 14,000 people on average. So what kind of network is this that we are uh, focusing at? Well, uh, we are looking at a network, a social network of students at a major US university. Actually, some of my colleagues, uh, they have access to this kind of uh, information. So the students in this university, it's a quite, these are a quite large university, they, uh, they share information and we can observe uh, this information sharing. So these are some of the, the statistics. So we see that um, in the network, there are over 40,000 uh, people and um, 3,600 3, of them were uh, once a seat for one of these campaigns. On average, these people have about 80 friends, but you notice that the seats, the people that actively share in, uh, a message, they have fewer friends than uh, the people on the network on average. So this might already suggest that people with many friends are less active actively in sharing these kind of campaigns. Of course, the age is quite young because these are students. Uh, about 50% uh, males versus females, slightly more uh, males in this network. And we see that every, like once the seed starts sh uh, sharing information, they reach on average 127 people. So we wanted to find out if you look at the reach of every person. So imagine a seed I, right? So one specific individual starts sharing an advertising campaign. How many friends or how many of his connections in the network will observe this, uh, uh, this campaign. And that's the reach. So that's our dependent variable. So anal to analyze this, we use something called a negative binomial regression, which is very similar to a normal regression uh, model, but just has an, a slightly different assumptions. So what we do, do we observe is, we see first that people with many friends, they on average, uh, reach, uh, reach more people. So your reach is higher if you have many friends. Okay, so that's the first force that is how connected you are. Interestingly, if you look at the number of friends your friends have, we observe that people obtain a higher reach if you have or if your friends have fewer friends. So that's the responsiveness, right? So if your friends have on average fewer friends, they're more likely to pay attention to your messages. Okay, so we see there are these two forces. Of course, you could question here, well, we have here uh, 
of course, 32 uh, two campaigns, but we analyze it only at once. So what happens if we look at all these campaigns separately? So we did as well. So we looked at the number of friends of friends, and we find that across all these campaigns, these are 17, by the way, it's slightly lower than the 32, because some of these campaigns didn't have enough of data. So we needed to have sufficient information to, to do the analysis. And we found that across all these campaigns, consistently, that if your friends have many friends, you obtain, you reach fewer people. Okay, so that's a little bit counterintuitive. You should have met many friends, but ideally your friends shouldn't have too many friends. And then you will reach um, more people. So what explains these results? Well, we could come up with two, two uh, potential explanations. The first one is, if you have many friends, you're more careful when you are sharing a message. Why is that? Well, highly connected people, so if you have many friends in your social network, you care more about your social image. So if you share some information to your network, you want to make sure that this information is actually relevant to your friends or to your connections. And of course, if you share an ad or something that is sponsored by a company, then maybe you are uh, more careful. So that's the first explanation. The second explanation is that uh, messages, they compete for attention. And people that have many friends, they might receive more messages on their, for instance, Facebook feed or social media feeds. And if you then uh, share one message to, the, to those people, they are less likely to pay attention to that, All right? So these are two, uh, two alternative explanations and they could reach to the same conclusion. So to, uh, test this uh, effect, what we collected was all the messages that these people shared in the network, and we used that as a measure for competition for attention, but also for sharing costs. So what we looked at, we said, okay, if you have more friends, are you more or less likely uh, going to share a message? So how many messages do you share on average? Well, in contrast to the sharing cost explanation, we find actually the people that have more friends in the social networks, they on average also send more uh, messages. Okay, they are more active on the social network. So this is not the first explanation does not hold. The second explanation is that if you have many friends, you are less likely going to um, pay attention to them. So what we looked at, do people with many friends also receive more messages? And of course, it's maybe not uh, su such a counterintuitive finding. We find that if you have many friends, you will receive many, many more messages. But this, does this really explain the uh, phenomenon? To do this, to test this, we do something called mediation analysis, okay? So we look at every person and we want to find out uh, for every seat, how many friends do they reach if they share the campaign? So our dependent variable is whether someone shares a message or not, okay? And as I just showed you, if you have many friends, then you are less likely to share the campaign, okay? So we look at the correlation. If you have more friends, then you're less likely to share. And that is exactly the first effect that I sh showed you that people with many friends, uh, whose friends also have many friends are less likely to obtain a higher reach. So people that have many friends are less likely to share the campaign. The explanatory factor that we want to explore is how many posts do these people receive? Well, we also know that if you have many friends, you will receive more messages, okay? And we further analyzed and we, we observed that people with, that receive many messages are less likely to share the campaign. Okay, so if we do this analysis, we observe that people with many friends, they receive more messages and therefore they are less likely to share the campaign. If we control for all these factors, we find that the relationship between the number of friends and the sharing the campaign is completely gone. This basically means uh, that we have some, something called scientific evidence that competition for attention explains the relationship between the number of friends that you have and whether you are sharing uh, the campaign or not. So the conclusion of this uh, first analysis is that competition for attention between posts explains why highly connected people 
are less, li are less likely to uh, participate in viral marketing campaigns. Okay? So targeting person A, for instance, in, uh, in that network that I showed you earlier, might not be such a good idea. So what are the implications of this finding for targeting people in a uh, viral marketing campaign? So to figure this out, we tested our idea that actually you should target people with many friends, but their friends should have only few friends. Okay, so we did this for an online viral game. So this is basically a game that you can play, let's say on your mobile phone, and there is some uh, viral component. You are have basically an incentive to share this to your friend because then this game, uh, game becomes more fun. So uh, this plot looks maybe a little bit complicated, but what we have is on the horizontal axis, we have how many people you have targeted and on the vertical axis is what is your final reach. So the, 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 the dark line on the top is the one that uses our strategy. And the second highest one is basically focusing on those who have many friends and their friends also have many friends. So what, is the, what, what did we find is that compared to a random strategy, so we also focus on a strategy where we just didn't really look at the characteristics of the people in the network. We just randomly targeted people uh, in that case, if you focus on people with many friends who have fewer friends, then you are 4.2 times better. So your reach increases uh, four times. Okay, so that is an improvement of 400%. Compared to the best strategy that is basically recommended by previous literature, that is just targeting people with many friends, our method improved uh, the performance of this campaign by 70%. So the reach was inc increased by 1.7 times. Okay, so we basically uh, did a follow-up study where we tried to uh, figure out what we found in the previous study. Can we, does it really work in practice? And this is uh, what we found. Okay, so it's very, very significant. Actually, 70% more people were reached by using our strategy. So what are the conclusions uh, from this research? Well, first, the optimal seeding strategy. So who should you target in a social network? is you should ideally target people with many friends, but their friends should only have few friends. Because if they, these people, that you, if your friends have many friends, then they are not going to pay attention or they are less likely to go to pay attention to the marketing campaign. So what is the performance of this strategy? Well, this performance is a 70% improvement compared to the best alternative that we tested, which was basically recommended by previous research, and that is quite commonly used in practice. And the final conclusion is, what explains this result and what is the underlying mechanism? Well, the underlying mechanism is competition for attention. What we find is that people with many friends, they receive more information, and because they receive so much information, on average, they are less likely to pay attention to a specific campaign, and they will not participate in this, okay? So getting these very uh, connected people activated is much more difficult and therefore makes more sense to focus on those people that have maybe not so many friends. So this is basically my sharing. Um, if you're interested, you can download uh, this research uh, through this link over here. Uh, it was published last year in uh, Management Science with my co-authors, uh, Sarah Gelper. Uh, and Gerrit van Brugge and Bovar are actually based in the Netherlands. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Very interesting suggestions. Questions? I do have one quick question. I'm wondering, oh, the finding is very interesting. Actually, just now um, I did not vote, but I was thinking along the same line um, to choose option B. Mm -hmm. um, but then my question is, if I were to really do it, how do I identify people with less network, a smaller network, um, if I were to conduct this seeding? Yeah, so that's a, that's a very good question. Um, so under, for some networks, you can actually observe the entire network uh, online. So for instance, Twitter is uh, completely publicly available. And many, I think in China, actually many networks, you can just crawl. So you know who is connected with whom. If that's the case, actually there is a network measure. It's actually more complicated than just looking at your friends and their friends. It's called something called Bonacci centrality. 
uh, where there is one parameter that we estimated. Uh, and then you can really identify the optimal target in the entire network. Uh, but in many networks, you might not observe the entire network. But what you then, uh, in most scenarios, so this is actually the second study is we, did, we tested in the Netherlands where uh, privacy concerns are a bit more of a, of course, uh, more significant. And if you, um, let's say, know uh, your friends, right? So if you know one specific person, then you know how many friends you have. So uh, your friends, your friends have. You can, so you can observe the second order. So we use, let's say, a limited information, uh, but it's still sufficient uh, to uh, implement our idea. So you, it's not necessary to observe the entire network. So what you need is basically for if you target a specific individual, obviously you need to know how many friends this person has, how many connections, but then you need to look at the, their profiles of each of those friends, how many friends they have. But it's not really important to know. Of course, it's helpful, but it doesn't really, we don't really need to know with whom these people are connected. Excellent. Thank you, Ralph. I, I think um, I'll ask Ricky to engage you as our advisor to seat our business talk uh, promotions to the right uh, seats in the future. Hey, you're welcome. I'm happy to help. <laughs> I can maybe do some follow-up research because I'm actually doing quite some uh, follow-up research in this area. One thing that I'm currently looking at is that one uh, observation in social networks is that people that are similar are connected. Hmm. So, of course, friends, they are, have something in common. So this also means that people with many friends, they are usually also connected to other people with many friends. So if you target, let's say, if you only focus on many friends, then what you're doing is you're, cluster, you're targeting some cluster of, uh, of people in the same area. What we're now doing is we are thinking we should actually spread the seats over different networks. So what we are doing is something called community detection, which is like a segmentation strategy in a network that tries to divide this network into different areas. So for instance, you can think about countries, right? So a network, let's say Hong Kong, a network Macau, and then it's maybe better to have a few seats in Macau and a few seats in Hong Kong. So we are testing that idea now and it seems to also be quite effective. So there are lots actually, of ways to further improve. Actually, this is very interesting because um, let me use my personal experience. Um, we did uh, a lot of promotion for various programs in the school. And if I, if I really uh, were to borrow the ideas from your uh, suggestion here, what we should do in the past, you know, we have been uh, going to Facebook or Google and so on, and then we say what kind of audience we want to target. But now that we listen to this finding, it seems like what we should do is just a random seeding, right? We, we can just play the platform and say we randomly see people instead of just clustering on those, those big clusters you were talking about. Yeah, random is actually pretty bad. I, I showed that the, the, the measure that, uh, if you do uh, random seeding, our the method that I propose is four times better. Four, four times, times better. Yeah, oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So random I seeding. I think many people suggest random seeding also. I mm. think Duncan Watts is one of them. He's quite famous. Uh, mm. Mm. But that is not really effective. I think most research in marketing and also in information systems actually. Looking at I, I don't want to, oh, Rav, I don't understand. Though. Why would your method work better than random seeding? I thought random seeding would actually help us randomly target those people who probably are not very well connected either. Yeah, but then if you have if you target people that are not very well connected, then um, you don't. So in the end, you want to target someone with that is relatively well connected, but mm -hmm. their friends should not be so connected. So that's the, mm -hmm. the idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Okay, Veronique has a question just now. Yeah, so LinkedIn indeed tells you the degree. So LinkedIn, this you could implement this strategy. So what is the impact of the number and type of social networks you belong to? Um, that's another. Good question. Um, actually, I, the, the research that I cited by uh, by former PhD student of mine, Chen, um, has looked into this. So we looked also, like if you are connected to multiple social networks, um, then you might be more actually more influential, um, especially uh, if you have multiple connections with the same person. So for instance, if you're connected to one person on LinkedIn and also to the same person on Facebook, then you have a much stronger impact on that other person. So if you take in that, if you take that into information into account, you could actually further optimize uh, the seeding strategy. In this research, we didn't look into this because I think most research doesn't really look into that question at all, but we have looked it into in one uh, project and there it indeed matters a lot. So if you have more, if you are 
connected to one person in multiple networks, you're actually more, uh, the, the chances that this person is going to respond to your message is much higher. Interesting. So that is, uh, yeah, okay, quite important. we have a, a couple of other questions, if you don't mind. Um, so uh, the first question is, uh, is it applied go globally or does it apply only to US? What do you think? Is that question for me? Yes. Oh, this is applied globally. So um, actually, uh, so the first study was indeed in the US. The second one was in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm also working a lot uh, with companies uh, in China because it's a little bit easier to obtain the information in China because there are rules on uh, uh, getting data are less strict. So yeah, this uh, applies globally. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, somebody who wanted your paper link or your data set link. Um, maybe you can just um, uh, share it with us and um, Ricky can actually share with the audience afterwards. Uh, the link is oh, here uh, also actually. Yeah, I can yeah. Uh, maybe copy it and uh, put it in chat. Thank you. And then uh, why doesn't the competition for attention happen to the seats with many friends? Ah, so because if you have uh, people that have many friends, they receive more messages. So if you think, for instance, on uh, I'm only on LinkedIn, by the way, always people ask me, are you on many social networks? I'm not, I, I, I completely dislike it, but I just like mathematics. So that's why I like this question. Um, so if you have many connections on LinkedIn, you get, of course, many more messages in your feed and you're less likely to pay attention to an individual message. If you have only few friends, then you receive fewer messages, but then you are more likely to pay attention to an individual message. So that's basically the reason why people with many connections. So imagine like saying someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, if you are sending a message to him, most likely he doesn't even see it because he has so many friends or okay. not really friends, maybe connections. Okay, in the interest of time, maybe we will just address one last question. Would product promotion versus information dissemination be different? Do we expect a different effect when the message is different? Um, bear, bearing in mind here, people's psychological reason in dissemination could matter. That's a lot. Would product promotion versus information dissemination be, be different? <clears throat> so yeah, that's a good uh, question. So if you think about just information dissemination, so there is a distinction with something that's something called like simple contagion or more complex contagion. Usually information dissemination is simple uh, contagion. That means I only need to have received the message once. So I see the message once and then I just decide to share it. So it's basically, you see a video online and you like it and then you share it obviously with your friends. If you think about product promotion and I think here maybe adoption, right? So whether I'm going to buy this product or whether maybe I donate money to ALS, then it actually helps if you receive the message multiple times. So what one thing could be if let's say only one friend uses a product, then maybe you don't really respond. But if 10% of your pro friends are using the product or maybe 30%, um, then you are more likely to respond. So earlier I said something about spreading the information, right? So if you are targeting a cluster of people it might not be so useful, but that, that applies to dissemination of information. If you're thinking about disseminating a product, then it's probably a good idea to cluster because then people reinforce each other. So that, that could be a boundary condition. Great, thank you. I'm sorry that um, there are some more questions in the chat room, but I think we are running out of time. So um, for those people who have further questions, I would suggest you um, to contact Ralph directly. You can easily find his email. And in case if you cannot, uh, just email us and we'll be happy to help you connect. Um, once again, thank you very much, Ralph and David. This is a very interesting afternoon, uh, both interesting talks and there are a lot of interest uh, and questions here. Um, and with that, I think uh, it's time for us to close the session. Thank you.